Howard Philip Lovecraft was born August 20th, 1890 in Providence, Rhode Island, and he started off having an unusual childhood where his traveling salesman father developed a type of mental disorder caused by untreated syphilis. When he was around the age of three, and in 1893 his father became a patient at the Butler Hospital in Providence, and there he, may, he remained until his death in 1898. Lovecraft spent many of his school years at home, where he started developing the an avid reading habit. He did attend Hope High School, but he had a nervous breakdown and could not earn his diploma. So he then became uh, his own self-published magazine, The Conservative, where he wrote several essays. But his first horror magazine, Weird Tales, bought Lovecraft one of the biggest literary success. And then after that, he married Sonia Green. They lived together in New York City for two years, and then his marriage failed. Lovecraft returned to writing some of the best stories, The Call of Cthulhu, came out in 1928, and Weird Tales, and shows Lovecraft's best effort. And he introduced many of supernatural beings throughout his stories, and he would keep repairing these elements throughout many other stories that he wrote. Lovecraft died of cancer on March 15, 1937, in Providence, Rhode Island, where he left behind more than 60 short stories. Robert Albert Block is a horror writer born in 1917 in Chicago, Illinois, and died in 1994 in Los Angeles, California. He first published a magazine at the age of 17, just after he had graduated from high school, and he later worked for a small press. After this and many other smaller jobs, he eventually quit from an advertising agency to become a full-time writer in 1953. He began his career with his story, The Scarf, in 1947, which led to three more screenplays from 1967 to 1972. Eventually, he wrote Psycho in 1959, which is his most well-known story, that was made into a film in 1960, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Can you have a vacancy? Oh, we have 12 vacancies. Block focuses on the evils of humanity and that everyone has a bad and a good side. And it's just hiding under all these psychological elements that make someone truly evil. And in his writing, he really focuses on the fact that the evil people or the evil monsters aren't the ones that are made up with the claws and the slime and the super ginormous, huge, scary things. They're the people sitting next to you, the people you pass on the street. They're anyone that you've ever encountered could have this evil side such as in Psycho with the motel owner he's just some ordinary guy who owns a motel no he's a psychopath who's has a lot going on um, his writing covers fantasy humor science fiction all the weird things but in his own style which isn't the purely horror, purely science fiction. He creates his own stories in a way that makes it so unique to him. Um, and Criminal Mind, the inner workings of crimin criminal events, which is again, I would relate that to the psychological um, pieces. And um, Randall D. Larson wrote this, Precursors of Psycho. It's an article or an essay from him based off of um, Block. And he includes a quote from Block, which says, The terrible inability to understand the rational behavior of certain human beings. What is it that impels that sometimes senseless, sadistic cruelty? And I tried to familiarize myself with it because I can recognize that deep down within. There are certain of those aspects within myself which I probably managed to exercise by way of typewriter. So all, he's basically saying that he has evil too. So he uses himself as a guide to his writing and to all his characters. And he's basically just uses that to fuel his horror writing, which makes it even more relatable because he is just like us. He's a person, he's grown as a human and he can see all the evils within himself and with the people around him and he uses 
his own environment to examine the world and figure out what can truly get to some people and <laughs> grind their gears. Um, One of his characters in The Scarf, which is one of his first novels, is um, Daniel Morley. And I did a little bit of research on this character just to get an example. And um, he is not a monster or creature of any kind. He's just a normal human, but who's slightly abnormal compared to others and very disturbed. And um, he keeps logs of all his problems and uses them to fuel for his killing, his, as a serial killer, he uses his own issues to um, propel that into his life. So as that character, he's, um, he has a lot of violence within himself and he uses that toward others, which is could be anyone if you think about all these strangers that pass by you throughout your lifetime you can definitely never guess that there is anything wrong until you truly get to know them just like in all these movies and screenplays I wanted to write a real story not the stereotyped, ephemeral sort of tale I turned out for the magazines, but a real work of art. Their creation of such masterpiece became my ideal. I was not a good writer, but that was not entirely due to my errors in mechanical style. It was, I felt, the fault of my subject matter. Vampires, werewolves, ghouls, mythological monsters, these things constituted material of little merit. Commonplace imagery, ordinary adjectival treatment and a prosely <laughs> anthropocentric point of view were the chief detriments to the production of a really good weird tale. I must have new subject matter, truly unusual pop material. If only I conceive of something that was to teratologically incredible. I long to learn the songs of the demons sing as they swoop between the stars or hear the voices of the olden gods as they whisper their secrets in the echoing void. I yearn to know the terrors of the grave, the kiss of maggots on my tongue, the cold caress of a rotting shroud upon my body. I thirsted for the knowledge that lies in the pits of mummied eyes, and burned for wisdom known only to the worm. Then I could really write, and my hopes would be truly realized. I studied the loose, antique masonry of the walls in the fungus light and the feeble rays which stole in from the street through the screen windows, and once when the noisome atmosphere of the place seemed about to sicken me, I opened the door and looked up and down the street, feasting my eyes on familiar sights and my nostrils on the wholesome air. Still nothing occurred to reward my watching, and I yawned repeatedly, fatigued getting the better of apprehension. Then the stirring of my uncle in his sleep attracted my notice. He had turned restlessly on the cot several times during the latter half of the first hour, but now he was breathing with unusual irregularity, occasionally heaving a sigh which held more than a few of the qualities of a choking moan. I turned my electric flashlight on him and found his face averted. So rising and crossing up to the other side of the cot, I again flashed the light to see if he seemed in any pain. Robert Block studied under Lovecraft, so their styles are very similar, and... Um... However, Robert Block stayed a lot more simple, and he's known for his simplicity in the horror genre, and he brings something new to the genre by not going in too deep to the monsters and the goriness of it. He stays realistic. H.P. Lovecraft, on the other hand, was he studied under Poe, so he really liked how his styles were very focused on horror, imagery, detail, so he focused a lot of effort on putting a lot of emphasis on the detail of like the supernatural creature or the house that they're going into just the more detail the more scary he can get it the more horror elements are possible. Um, Robert's block stories did get turned into movies like Psycho and the two 
to come after. So he moved to Hollywood to become a scriptwriter after he started his writing career, publishing magazines and writing um, short stories. His work inspired and influenced the sty styles and techniques of writer that have since come after him and until he turned 77 when he passed away. Lovecraft first began his horror tales when he was writing for his own self-published magazine and it didn't really get a lot of attention until after his death but because of that it gave a lot of other horror writers, mystery writers, the ability to follow in his footsteps and see that he was an accomplished writer with all of his unique elements, especially about he was more focused on ancient times, ancient words, just uh, More on Lovecraft is that he had a huge effect on the society at the time um, because of his insights on human nature and the supernatural and Block did too, but Lovecraft's was um, to a bigger scale. Uh, a quote from Robert Price, who wrote H.P. Lovecraft, Prophet of Humanism in 2001, is Lovecraft scoffed at the notion that humankind is central in the scheme of things, a belief held in different ways by religious people and by some who would call themselves humanists. Um, he had a different perspective on most social issue issues than most and uses it to his advantage throughout his work. Uh, Lovecraft was an influential horror writer. He helps us imagine what lies beyond and gives re the readers a new perspective and imagination by keeping the situation very real. He adds his own horror elements uh, as the moments like as we are most fearful because they are real fe fears that everyone can have with these conceptual and methodological implications. And this shows that, like, um, Lovecraft incorporates fears, like, everyone's scared of the dark, everyone's scared of monsters, so he makes his fears and, like, expands on them into his own world. Like, he keeps, he keeps slime into most of his stories, and that just shows that he keeps all of his stories similar, but then again, adds their own traits as they go on.